Hello everyone, my name is Rabia Khabuz. Uh, today's presentation focuses on summarizing Chapter 6, Telecommunications and Networking Security, from page 515 to 560 from the Sean Harris CISSP book. So the topics to be discussed uh, in this presentation uh, that I think there are major key points um, that I learned from Harris' book. The telecommunications, um, the OSI reference model, the TCP IP model, and security standards. OSI reference model. Um, let's define network models first. Um, network models use layers to describe networks. Each layer describes the services provided to the layer above it and those required from the layer below it. The OSI reference model or the so-called open system interconnection model is the most well-known model maintained and defined by the International Standard Organization. It defines a networking framework to implement protocols in seven layers. It consists seven layers numbered from the bottom which is the closest to the network to the top the closest to the user. We have the physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, pres presentation layer, and application layer. So we're going to go from the bottom up and describe all uh, the seven layers. The layer one, which is the physical layer, <coughs> it defines the type of media to be used and it defines representation of data on the medium. This layer conveys the bitstream electrical impulse um, light or radio signal uh, through the network at the electrical and mechanical level. It provides the hardware means of sending and receiving data on a carrier, including defining cables, cards, and physical aspects. Fast Ethernet, RS-232, and ATM are protocols with, the, with physical layer components. Layer 2, which is data link layer. At this layer, data packets are encoded and decoded into bits. It furnishes transmission protocol knowledge and management and handles errors in the physical layer, uh, flow control, and frame synchronization. A data the data link layer is divided into two sublayers: the media access control, which is MAC layer, and the logical link control, LLC layer. It provides directly connected host-to-host -host data transfer, and it defines also higher level structure of data or frames for the network. Layer 3, which is the network layer, um, this layer provides switching and routing technologies, uh, creating logical path known as virtual circuits for transmitting data from node to node. Routing and forwarding are functions of this layer, as well as addressing, interworking, error handling, congestion control, and packet sequencing. It provides end-host to end-host data transfer across multiple data links. The fourth layer, which is the transport layer, this layer provides transparent transfer of data between end systems or host, and it is responsible for end-to-end -end error recovery and flow control. It ensures complete data transfer and provides process-to-process -process data transfer, and it might provide reliable data transfer as well. It defines higher level structure for data, datagrams, streams, other names in various protocols. And it defines port style addressing for services or processes to allow to identify individual processes communicating. The fifth layer, which is the session layer, this layer establishes, manages, and terminates connection between applications. Um, it, set up, it sets up and coordinates and terminates conversation, exchanges, and dialogues between the applications at each end. It deals with session and connection coordination. It provides a logically persistent connection between processes, which is keeping track of when a conversation begins and ends. Um, 
it might involve user or host authentication or login, uh, transaction encapsulation for database access, etc. Layer 6, which is the presentation layer, this layer provides independence from differences in data presentation by translating from application to network format and vice versa. The presentation layer works to transform data into the form that the application layer can accept. This layer formats and encrypts data to be sent across the network, providing freedom from compatibility problems. It is sometimes called the syntax layer. It defines the network representation of data, how the data looks like in the network. Um, our numbers are presented in binary, our text is it in ASCII, etc. It manages data format information for network communications. This layer is also responsible for certain protocol conversation, data encryption, decryption, or data compression and decompression. It converts between the network and the host presentation of data and allow a PC running Windows to speak with a Linux machine or an IBM iframe, for example. Layer 7, which is the application layer. This layer supports application and end-user processes. Uh, communication partners are identified. Quality of service is identified. User authentication and privacy are considered. And any constraints on data syntax are identified. Everything at this layer is application-specific. This layer provides application services for file transfers, email, and other network software services. Telnet and FTP are applications that exist entirely in the application level. Tiered application architect architectures are part of this layer. So layer 7 is the top layer of the OSI model. Uh, do not confuse it with the application itself application sits above the application layer. So this layer provides a portal for the application to access the network. It provides a set of interfaces for sending and receiving applications to gain access to and use network services such as network file transfer, message handling, and database query processing. TCP IP model. First, what is TCP IP? Um, the TCP IP is a suite of protocols that governs the way data travel from one device to another. IP is a network layer protocol that provides datagram routing services. Its main stack is to support inter internet work addressing and packet routing. Uh, TCP is referred to as a connection-oriented protocol because before any user data <coughs> are actually sent, handshaking takes place between the two systems that wants to communicate. And the TCP IP model has four layers. From bottom to top, the physical layer, our network access layer consists of, of uh, routines for accessing physical networks. Uh, the second layer, which is Internet Work layer, it defines datagram and handles the routing of data. The transport layer, which is host-to-host -host layer again, uh, we can call it host-to-host. -host. It provides end-to-end -end data delivery services. And the, the top layer, which is the application process layer, consists of applications and processes that use the network. Then we have the uh, TCP versus UDP. Um, both protocols work at the transport layer. Uh, the TCP and UDP sit together in the transport layer and developers can choose which to use when developing an application to transfer data across the network. Both use ports to communicate with upper layers and to keep track of various conversations that take place simultaneously. Uh, there are many differences between TCP and UDP. TCP is more reliable than UDP. It ensures that the packet reaches their destinations 
uh, unlike the UDP where it doesn't return the ACK or acknowledgments and does not guarantee that a packet will reach its destination. We know also that UDP uses fewer resources and it is faster than TCP. One more thing to uh, know about the transmission control protocol is the handshake. The, the TCP handshake happens whenever a TCP connection is used. A TCP handshake provides a small bit of security and it, it is used to increase the reliability of IP communication. For example, if the server is unavailable, or too busy, or the connection between the client and the server is not reliable, the handshake will fail. The handshake will also fail if the requested port is blocked by the firewall or other filtering devices. For example, when your computer visits um, myolusa.edu or Our Lady of the Lake um, University website, it does a TCP handshake on the standard uh, HTTPS port. Um, data is transferred then the connection is closed. The next topic that I'm, ta I'm going to talk about is the security standards. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer EEEE uh, developed different uh, network standards and we're going to talk about um, the 802.1 AE uh, which is a so-called MAC security. It allows authorized systems that attach to and interconnect LANs in a network to maintain confide confidentiality of transmitted data and to take measures against frames transmitted or modified by unauthorized devices. It also protects packets by cryptographic means between devices, uh, for example between switches or a computer and a switch. Uh, the second standard which is the EEEE 802.1 Point one AR, which is the standard for local and metropolitan area networks, um, so-called secure device identity. It specifies unique per-device identifiers, uh, so-called DIV-ID, and the management and the cryptographic binding of a device. Uh, and, and that device might be a router, switch, and access point. The next standard is the, um, the EEEE 802.1X. It aims to restrict access to the services offered by a LAN to users and devices that are permitted to make use of those services. It also defines port-based network access control to provide a means of authenticating and authorizing devices attached to a LAN port that has point-to-point -point connection characteristics. The next key point is type of transmission, type of data transmission. Um, physical transmission can happen in different ways, analog or digital. Uh, it can use different synchronization, uh, synchronous and asynchronous, and um, it can also use one single channel over baseband or multiple channels over uh, broadband. The, the analog and digital uh, transmission are types of signals that follow different uh, mannerisms in propagating any signal. Signals are, or the signals that follow analog methodology, propagate in such a manner that they can be studied at any instant of time. On the other hand, digital signals can be defined as discrete values, which are a whole number. Another difference between analog and digital transmission deals with the hardware's ability to recover the transmitted signal. Analog modulation, which is continuously variable by nature, can often require adjustment at the receiver end in order to reconstruct the transmitted signal. However, digital transmission, because it uses only ones and zeros, to encode the signal offers a simpler means of reconstructing the signal. Both types of modulation can incorporate error detecting and error correcting information to the transmitted signal. Asynchronous and synchronous uh, transmission types. With asynchronous transmission signal 
timing is not required. Signals are sent in a, an agreed pattern of bits and if both ends are agreed on a pattern then communication can take place. In asynchronous transmission each bit remains time in the usual way. Therefore at bit level the transmission is <coughs> at the bit level uh, the transmission is still synchronous or timed. However the asynchronous transmission is applied at byte level once the receiver realizes that there is a chunk of incoming data timing or synchronization takes place for the chunk of data. For example, of a synchronous transfer is a synchronous transfer mode, which is ITM switching. The, the ATM allows voice, uh, data, and video to be transmitted in fixed length, in a fixed length cells of about uh, 50 bytes, 53 bytes. This will be the uh, the two uh, signal method, methods, uh, broadband and the baseband. They are used to transmit information over network media. The baseband transmission typically uses digital signaling over a single wire. The transmissions themselves take the form of either electrical pulses or lights. The digital signal used in baseband transmission occupies the entire bandwidth of the network media to transmit a single data signal. Using baseband transmissions it is possible to tr transmit multiple signals on a single cable by using a process known as multiplexing um, and it uses time division multiplexing TDM which divides a signal channel into time slots. As far as the broadband goes it uses digital signaling and uses analog signals in the form of optical or electromagnetic waves over multiple transmission frequencies. For signals to be both sent and received, the transmission media must be split into two channels. Alternatively, two cables can be used, one to send and one to receive transmission.